to the Wait. Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us what? grow together. Nice. Yes. I was just trying to distract oh, okay. you. I figured you were. Nicely done. Happy Thanksgiving. Well done. No, it's over. Uh, well, happy Christmas. Ha- happy holidays. Happy holidays. Well, happy I hope holidays. you had a great Thanksgiving. Maybe I should have said that. So, do you remember when everybody was afraid that Christmas was being stolen? Like the whole war on Christmas thing? What? Yeah, Starbucks. Because of the like happy the, holidays yeah. thing. So this was like this, this was like no, when before was I was even at the gathering. So okay. it was at my last church. Yeah, I remember and, this. Yeah. So, th- yeah. so this is a big church, right? So the the, like, like several hundred people out there, <laughs> and everybody was all on edge because you know people aren't saying Merry Christmas and you know. Rah, rah, rah. And I'm, so I got up on Sunday morning, to, like at the very yeah. beginning, and I'm like, Happy holidays, everybody! And like literally, there were probably like 200 <laughs> people that shouted back at really? me, Merry Christmas! That's hilarious. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> Well, well Christmas, just so y'all know, yeah. a holiday, yeah. let's let's break that word down, is a what? Fun day. Holy. Holy day? <laughs> I don't know. Holly? Right, yeah. Holy. It's a holy day. Okay. That's the the, the, the root of the word is the holiest of days, okay. right? So these, like a celebrated day. Right. So when we yeah. say happy holidays, we're saying happy holy days. I mean, okay. it's, it's, it's just well, as Christian as Merry Christmas. But if you look at the tradition of... Christmas, it started as a pagan holiday. Yeah. And the Christians started so, so, so it's like don't they talk were, about that part. I have no I have no problem with it at all. Because it's it's taking something that we have and putting it into the lens of something you, that people do. Do you get. let your kids have a Christmas tree? Yeah. Like, you know, no kids, that's a pagan Ashtaroth pole. We're not right. worshiping it. That's what it. I mean. Like, and we can hand. make it our own. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's called, like it's called redeeming upset. culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I have no, pro- I have no problem with it. But but once people start saying those kind of things, I say, once you start reading the history of what we celebrate, it's pretty messy, really. It's not like it is what, what well, it right. is today. It's yeah. evolved over time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, the process of us, you know, getting into culture and taking the good and, you know, redeeming it. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we play and, videos in church and speaking do you, of, do you know what else is on video sometimes? What's that? Oh, oh on, new, YouTube. Right. on YouTube, on <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I don't get me started on YouTube, but speaking of the holidays, mm. I, I had a feeling you were not going to like this. You are correct. Was I right? Well, I thought it was so... <laughs> Pumpkin spice, every I hear. I'm not sure you guys probably don't care at all about this, but I hear pumpkin spice is like starting to be on its way out. Do you I, don't, do you I don't look, strike me do I as a, like a basic you white do, girl. You do not strike me as someone who likes <laughs> sp- pumpkin spice anything. Oh, I, I every morning I go through that Starbucks line. Yeah, I don't to get that. my pumpkin spice. Hey, I will latte. admit, I will admit, I do like a pumpkin spice every once in a while if Maria gets one. But I heard there's like like six or seven grams of sugar in a pumpkin spice That's latte. Why it's so good. Oh, well, what, it's kind of, what, kind of milk you, what kind of milk do you put in your latte? Um, no foam, uh, skim, coconut, milk half with oat milk, um, oat only milk organic, non-GMO. <laughs> no, just kidding. Whoa. Steve, I don't it, do that. It is actually fifty grams. Fifty grams. Okay, what that's size, still what size a ton of sugar. Lot? Yeah, can but of grams are so small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's give you an idea here. The size. Oh, this actually has a lot of sugar too. <laughs> okay, so the smallest one, which is called Grande, has fifty grams. Okay, so a large one could have 70, 80 grams easily. Probably. Wait, easily. The, like a venti. A vent, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't play that game with Starbucks. I just tell them small, medium, large. I'm like, I'm not. I, just, I don't speak that, Italian. Isn't that a? Uh, is that a Paul Rudd clip? Yeah. 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 It is. I would like a large. sixteen. I would like a sixteen ounce black <laughs> coffee, please. You know what really bothers okay. me, and it b- probably shouldn't bother me this much. Yeah. I always drink my coffee black, right? So whenever I order coffee, and then this is this happens everywhere. You go to a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, while you're talking, <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go ahead and open yeah, these like up here. Yeah, I like a 16 here. ounce black coffee. All right, would you like me to leave room in there? No, I want 16 For ounces what? of black For coffee. What? <laughs> it's black. <laughs> I would much rather. But these are baristas, be able to, right? I mean, I would, if I'm at McDonald's and they ask the question, I'm not nearly as critical. You don't put cream in at all. It's, no, that's what black is. Okay, yes, I, I hear that. But no. if you're a barista, so, you need to know but, this. But, but I think that it's the don't, purest the form of coffee on earth. But here's the thing: earth. is people don't generally communicate well, but so also, they've probably been burnt on that. So they have to they have to ask there, questions so that someone doesn't there complain. Are also, no. several people <laughs> you disagree. Who, who that's would, what I would do. Who that's very great. Order so black you. Well or want to do it okay. themselves. You know, there are people who want to. They want to do it themselves, and I. That's weird. 
But I think that's probably what it is, is there's enough people that say, I want black coffee because they don't want the barista to put cream and sugar in. They want to do it. That's why they have the little station. Matt, that, that may be oh, it. sorry, Matt. My, my theory is that, that there are a lot of people in our world today, and this is not just generational, because my generation fits this too. Uh-huh. There are a lot of people in our world today who no longer know how to think because, they're, <laughs> because their down. phones think for them. Da- David right? is on the, tr- on the need, millennial train. I don't need to process. No, I, I said hey, this Siri, is a generational. How I feel about that? Right. <laughs> 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 That's exactly AI, right. What should I say to David about this? His comment. <laughs> I can't wait. I cannot wait until I can use AI to replace all the staff at this church. <laughs> hey, it's, it's just, not. It's not far away. You know who's the most replaceable with AI? This is me. I, why is that? Uh, customer service, right? We have it's already, already all been. It's already all been replaced um, with AI, enough. basically. <laughs> We just put a self checkout at the gathering, you know. <laughs> Can we like have a, a greet yourself I, station? Like I do a, know how to I clean toilets, so you know. Like, this is the, this is the greeter station. Have, like, just go and if you want yeah. a greeting, just pick the greeting pick, you want, and this AI generated face comes up and says, yeah. "Hello, Steve. Welcome to the gathering. I hope you I, enjoy your experience I, today." Uh, I got an ad for an AI video software that does talking head videos. Yeah. yeah. Which if you're watching, it's kind of like how we do Steve's videos on Sundays. Yep. Um, and it's completely AI generated. So you mm-hmm. just type in a script and the computer, and it's. Oh no, Brady Shearer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to freak out. We're coming for you, Pro Truth. Okay, you got to you gotta <laughs> put his name in the description. Yeah. 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 Right? So that, so that the, the bots will find it. <laughs> and, and him. Because you, you know, if there, are people, if there are people in the, the Christian media world, who do Google searches for their own name? Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> it was scary how, find how realistic <laughs> okay. this was. But maybe we should bring him on here. Uh, but would, he's in Canada. I guess that's not that I far. I didn't mean bring him here. There's this thing called like D- Zoom. Oh, Zoom. We don't have the technology for that. It sounds too difficult. <laughs> We do. <laughs> okay, we do. Anyway. I would love to have him anyway, on Anyway, did you know the Dude largest pumpkin fan. recorded w- was in 2021 weighing 2,702.9 pounds? I did. I recently saw it on TV. Nuh-uh. No, From I 2001. did. 2001. It was massive. Over 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkin are produced in the U.S. every year. Pumpkin facts on here. Well, I got these because of pumpkin spices going out. This may be our last opportunity oh, no. to get these. Whatever, and uh, Ever? Ever? It's, who knows? The world is going to revolt against pumpkin spice. We've had just had too much of it. Wouldn't that be great? Well, Yes. And I heard that pumpkin spice, maybe you might know this, guys, but I heard that pumpkin spice wasn't really a thing outside of, like, you know, Thanksgiving until the pumpkin spice latte at I believe that. at uh, Starbucks did it. And so, now there's and pumpkin spice. There's, no, there's pumpkin no pumpkin spice in it. Everything. It's pumpkin spice. So it's pretty much just, like, nutmeg. Well, no, there <laughs> is. There is actual pumpkin puree in it because I've made one at home before. Well, that, that's that's the one you so made at home, one. not necessarily. I the, looked up the directions that claim to be the fake version of the. We try one. This actually smells kind of good. All right, so Give so it a smell. yeah. So you smells remember very on Sunday, spicy. I was talking about like the nature of God. Yeah, is this to make, is the reverse. Is to make nature holy of God. what is common. Yeah. But the nature of the world is to take what is unholy holy, and, and make this, it common. This is a great example of that. This is taking what is ho- unholy and making it common. It looks a little bit like a Swiss cake roll. You know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so unholy. The devil loves okay, to counterfeit. But I'm just going to say, visually here, it looks like a lot of cream it, in there. Is a Swiss cake roll completely covered with chocolate so you can't tell how much cream's in it? Y- yeah, you can't this really see it. looks like a generous it. amount of cream in there. Like You could like, stick your finger I don't know if that's a good there, thing or a bad thing, but that's probably where most of the sugar comes from. It smells better than it tastes. I'm, I, I like it. <laughs> I'm not going to eat the whole thing, but... It's it's not awful. I'm, I'm going to be uh, honest. I can't honest. even taste it. Oh, you can't taste a pumpkin I, I spice I, or I, nothing? I just, it's just I sweet. Can't even taste, no, I mean, I can taste a little bit of cream and I... Well, Yuck. you're missing out. It's, I'll give it a solid B. B. <laughs> I'll give it a B. I'll give it a B. The, the, I would not like. I can actually. I can. I'm not going to go all my way to get. There's something going on in there. It's a. It's a weird sensation. Uh huh. Um. I, I would but, prefer yeah. if instead of pumpkin spice things were just pumpkin flavored. I don't even like, like pumpkins. Don't like, like, I don't like pumpkin like, pie. No, I don't like pumpkin pie. 
So I, I love oh, pumpkin pie because that, I love Cool Whip. <laughs> you know, it actually the cream inside reminds me a little bit of the Cool Whip flavor. That might be what they were going for. Yeah, it's not. It it's not bad. Is. I will say the the. Well, you only, can have the rest. Uh, thank the absolute you. I best appreciate that's very kind of you. Little Debbie Hostess snack cake is the Christmas trees. <sighs> Don't even get yes. me started on that. The, that is my favorite. The, no, yeah, because favorite. they got the sugar yes. crystals and it just the, it gets the a little best crunch. little Debbie snack is Chris, no the Christmas one. I said, I said one. holiday. Holiday. I said holiday. Don't they, oh, okay. Holiday yeah. one. By far, mm. they make the big version. Have do you tried? Really? There's a bigger because there's a big box. Well, what other holiday? I thought it was just you get what twice other holiday as many. ones. Do they have? No, they actually make know. them bigger. This <laughs> right here, they got it. That's why you know, you know these be are better? interesting because they try weird, like a, a strange tur- things. A turkey roll, and instead of the cream, they had gravy. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> a turkey roll, Am I right? Like a turkey roll, like like this, a sweetened so. version, like it's turkey flavored, or is there an actual what turkey roll? I'm not yeah, aware. Of. Like like, the, like they they take the turkey and the stuffing and they kind of mix it together, it. and then they roll it around gravy. A, that sounds like around what gravy. I had so the cream, the gra- instead, of, instead of the cream, you have gravy. Oh, so you're like making like a almost well, you know like how a if you put gravy in, in the fridge, it like congeals hardness. and it becomes like a jello. Yeah. So you do that, and then you 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 make your. But like, you'd have to like turkey and dressing dehydrate mix and flatten it stuff. out, right? And you like kind of roll it flat, and then you put the gravy on it, and then you just roll it all, I'm and then cook this. it. I, so I it'd be like raw. It'd home. be like raw <laughs> ingredients. Marianne, start warming up the turkey. Okay. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to Kroger now, and I'm buying me a turkey, and I'm going to try this. Well, yeah. I mean, you know what you could try it with just for funsies yeah. is get, like, some stovetop stuffing, which isn't great, but, it you know, just for the it consistency. Works. And then it's get some, like, good. deli turkey. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I think this is a thing. Okay. Well, I have another. We're done here, folks. I know what we're trying next week on the podcast. So, you know, I, I still have one turkey leg left. I think I might have it for lunch. I'm super excited we, about that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. The amount of people who commented on the clip about turkey legs last week, who thought that was like, like our most like yeah, watched clip and ever. They, they thought it was like they were like, "You guys are idiots." It's like obviously we were. It was <laughs> being funny. Like people genuinely, I think, thought we were being. Mm. Serious? I mean, we are idiots, but that's not the reason. Yeah. So just so, put that out there. I have some questions for you. I have questions but, for you. But um, <laughs> I got one. I have one fun question. These are more. The other ones are a little bit more on the serious side. Okay. So do you, do we have time? You think for a fun? We can question. do whatever we want. Okay. Why do you always look at John when you ask if we have time? Well, because he's the one who's editing it in the end, and he's the one who looks at the you know the analytics. Well, we want to keep we want to keep the folks he'll just watching. Chop it happy. off if there's yeah. not time. So. <laughs> I don't think back. I also <laughs> don't want John to have to edit very much on it. So, uh, um, but here's my question: I'm take this What is out. Christmas to you, but not to anyone else? What's something something <laughs> that is Christmassy to you, but not anybody else? Can you please rephrase the question? So. So like when you say what, do you, what yeah. is it like? What does it mean to me that it doesn't mean to other people? No, no. So like, like let's a, say a let's say that every or... year your family goes to um, goes to the movies on on like but December first. Okay, so maybe your family goes to McDonald's Christmas morning. Probably. I don't know what it may be. McDonald's is there something? Is there something that you? What's something that's Christmassy to you? Yeah, that is not Christmassy to other people. So. A, a lot of that kind of stuff has changed in the last yeah. couple of years, right? Because, you know, our kids are on the other side of the country, so they're not home as much. So our, our Christmas traditions have been modified yeah. a little bit. Add on top of that, the fact that I'm a pastor, uh-huh. which means every single Christmas Eve, I'm at church, right? Yeah. And so some of our Christmas Eve traditions have to go around that. So this isn't a really significant okay. one, but it's like something is that we often on Christmas Eve get Chinese food. Okay. That's I, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. So that's, like I like doing it. Is but. there like a specific dish that that you do? No. No, we just call just ahead. Just call ahead and like, "Hey, what is everybody feeling?" Yeah, I mean, pretty much yeah. just like, what do you guys want? I mean, okay. I, I'm I am super boring when it comes to food, <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> chicken fried rice. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, just give, give me the chicken fried rice. That's, so, all that's a good one. Yeah, but you know, we always have to make sure that we don't get pistachios and cashews because yeah. Liam's allergic and yada, right. yada, yada. My, uh, mine are based around food as well. One thing, so we go to Middletown Lights every year as a family. Great free thing. If you've never been there, you should. You dri- drive through lights. It's, don't, um, don't say Middletown. <laughs> it's in the park in Middletown. 
old town. So like very close to their downtown. There's a park there. I would not recommend going on like a Friday, Saturday, or maybe even Sunday. A weekday is a great day to go because the lines are much like yeah. you, the line can be out in the street. But one thing that we do is we always because it's in your car. We go to Wendy's first and we let the kids kind of get some some food and then we eat it as we go through the drive through. Nice. Um, nice. And then another thing we also do like Dayton light stuff because they right. got the the wind the, the windows at uh, Schuster Center and mm-hmm. they got a tree and stuff. And then we we always go eat at Spaghetti Warehouse nice. before because you get to sit in the trolley yeah. there and uh, you know it's yeah. not Christmassy but to us it's like a Christmas tradition. That's cool. That's cool. We um we went to Spaghetti Warehouse for our wedding rehearsal dinner. I always have a good meal there. Yeah. I'm always but <laughs> when best. I look at this. When I look at how the place is run, I'm always questioning it when I show up. I'm like, is this going to be the last time I, yeah. I come here? Yeah, it's so good. The best it thing is. about Spaghetti Warehouse is, regardless of what you order, for like $5 more, you can get a giant yes. meatball and a big yeah. sausage. Yeah, you're right. That is <laughs> like... But one thing I don't like, they used to do like burgers, and they had a little bit wider menu there. Why? The burgers were really good. Who gets a burger? Why would you I go did. there for a burger? I don't know. Because it Italian style? Because I'm not a huge fan of their pastas. I don't think they're that great. <laughs> but I did Ooh. really like their burgers. All right, you go to an Italian restaurant. What do you get? Um, I usually that like. Serve burgers. So, so <laughs> I, I often like. So, when I go to like Carabas, I'll get the chicken Brian or something like that. That one. Who's Brian? I don't know Why who he is, chicken? but he makes good chicken and there's like goat cheese on it and some stuff. So mm-hmm. I go to that. Or I might like if I go to Bravo, I would get their um, I would get their uh, lasagna because it's really, really good there. And their lobster bisque. Oh, all right. You know, like real lasagna. Italian stuff. Right. Because you're Italian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Nuzo. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we have no transit. We have no know, transition out of this. I don't know why you're so down on Spaghetti Warehouse. I, I, I love Spaghetti Warehouse. I'm not down on it. I just well, kind of really said want the Spaghetti Warehouse. Not right. good. I'm not a huge I fan mean, of their pasta. Kind of, they're, they're, it's literally in their, their name. Meatballs, their we meatballs are there, great. We should go there our next staff lunch. We should Spaghetti, do Spaghetti Warehouse Spaghetti downtown? Warehouse. Yeah. It's worth it. It is fun. It this, is a good time. So there's also a Spaghetti Factory. Did you know this? Yes. Where is that? Well, there's one in Cincinnati, but it's actually more out on the West Coast. So is it a lot like it's exactly it's okay. exact same. So actually, we had Spaghetti Factory mm-hmm. catered Liam and Gabby's rehearsal dinner because that's what they wanted because that's where they used to go on their would, dates all the time when they were in college. Would anyone be shocked if Spaghetti Warehouse closed tomorrow? Are you making an announcement? Uh, no, I'm just wondering. I'm I always like just waiting for it to close. I haven't down. been there in probably eight. Yeah, years. that's what I mean. Every time so I, I go know. in there, but I, it's very empty usually when I'm there. But, but I'm always shocked. Years. That it's stayed open this long. And there's one in Akron, too, and it's like the Are same sure kind of vibe. Open? It's I open. All right, it's good. open. Mass. Yeah. <laughs> it's open. But Matt can look it up. Okay, right. questions. And I think this is an interesting one. because, And, and I'm kind of trying to see where, um, where what your thoughts on it. But so the question is, should people read or study the minor prophets on their own? Di- di- kind of difficult to understand. You Super, have to understand yeah. the context, the culture, um, a lot of like history involved with the minor prophets. Mm-hmm. So, should that be something that people should tackle on their own? Yeah, it could, it could be. It could be frustrating. Yeah, it could be discouraging. Well, it could you be could, confusing. If you don't do it properly, you could also have a very bad opinion mm-hmm. of God. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. There, there are obviously dangers. You could also get some really weird views about like just life in general. General. Yeah. All that said, I think the answer is still yes. Yeah. I think people should read it and study it on their own. Um, I think where people usually get in trouble in, in studying the Bible is, is not of, oh, I don't understand this. It's, oh, I know exactly what this mm-hmm. means. Yeah. Right. And I, I, so I think the, the danger very, is very, very true. Don't don't get into that mindset of, oh, well, obviously this is what that means. Uh, I have a general rule of thumb that if I think a passage means something and I can't find anybody anywhere that agrees with me, like, and I'm looking yeah. at like books and commentaries and stuff. Yeah. If I can't find anybody else that thinks that, then I'm probably wrong. Right. And I probably need to take a, a, well, a closer look. There's a big difference between, you know, saying I'm, I'm tackling this on my own um, in the sense that like, I'm not listening, you know, to a sermon series on this, or I'm not going to Bible study on this. There's a difference between that and, 
um, and then saying, I'm not going to look into any other wisdom. You know, I'm not going to read any books on my own. I'm not, you know, you can do it on your own, but mm-hmm. don't be the only mm-hmm. voice yeah. speaking into you or don't try to interpret the Bible purely out of your own wisdom. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And I, I think that, that, that prompts me to think that, you know, one of the things you can do with the minor prophets specifically, because they are so tricky um, before you read, prepare yourself. Mm-hmm. So like we just did Zachariah. Um, and so I talked on Sunday about the Bible project, which has all these videos. I you was know, just going to say maybe, that. Maybe before you read the book, watch the video from the Bible project so you get an overview of yes. it. So you have a sense of, of where, and you could do this with any books in the Bible. Yeah, but I would say the more tricky ones, the better experience you're going to have watching Bible project beforehand. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the other thing is there are lots of internet resources that are trustworthy. Uh, mm-hmm. That you you can like learn from. So one of my favorites is Got Questions. Yeah, I think it's GotQuestions.org. Is that, that right? Yep. Got que- really yeah. good stuff there, and they, they do cover it a might wide just be range questions. of questions. Dot I can't remember, but it's it, I think it's yeah. something like that. It's I think it's question, got questions. Got questions. I think the questions one is actually the Mormons. Okay, we well, yeah. don't do that Maybe, one. Maybe, but I'm not sure. But I think it's Got Questions. Dot org. But we'll, we'll we'll figure it out, Matt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Got Questions. Hey, yeah, that's, it's a really, okay. really good. Yeah, I, I haven't read anything on there that I've been like, Ew, right. you know, like they do a pretty good job of mediating and taking yep. out the stuff that's on the fringe. So, so I think that's a very good point in there of the, the you know, another thing that people like to do is make the minor things, the major things. Mm-hmm. And, and in the minor prophets is, is a perfect example of that, right. of like revelations is another one where people like to make the minor things, the major things. And that's when you start to get into trouble. Cause it's like, this isn't a salvation issue here. It's okay. If we maybe read it and we interpret a little bit different, mm-hmm. as long as we're not too far on the fringe where it's, you know, heresy or something, yeah. but yeah, you always want to be careful with, you know, when you start to go down those pathways, is this changing my view of Jesus? Right. Mm-hmm. This changing my view of salvation, um, because that that can become dangerous. I think just one other resource for people, since we're throwing them out there, is BibleGateway.com. dot com. Yeah, another really good one. That and, and these well, are just what really do you like helpful. on Bible Gateway? Because I've found their commentaries and stuff to be hard to use. All right, I I really just use it for its its search features. But okay. I, I know it's a good place where there's lots of resources. Yeah. For for me, online commentaries, um, I go other places. Uh huh. So BibleHub.com is one yeah. place. They've got a lot of commentaries there. Yes. Um, a, a really good one is Precept Austin. Uh-huh. And I think it's .com, but it might it might be .org. Okay. So maybe Matt can look that up for us. I don't know. Precept Austin. Um, it, it's got... It, it has got a wealth of resources for those who like to really do inductive Bible study, but a lot of it's a lot, a little bit more on a deeper level. Uh, but I think it's a good resource. And then you know you can always get apps, mm-hmm. right? Like the the Bible app, uh, U version has some resources. Uh, the my Bible app that I use most of the time is called Olive Tree. Yeah. And with Olive Tree, you can purchase commentaries if you want, and, and then have those available. Are, to are you. they as good as like the study Bible ones? Because I, I just haven't really found ones that I like better than the ones that are in my study Bibles. Because if you have like, different translations, the uh, you know the commentary is a little bit different in them, and sometimes mm-hmm. I enjoy just having different translations of the yeah. Bible that are study Bibles and just reading that, I find that's like way more helpful for me. Yeah. I, I think they're good. I mean, like for the, for me with the olive tree ones, because I've been using this app for probably 15, 17 years or yeah. so. And so I've bought a lot of commentaries and, but I, I buy deeper level commentaries uh-huh. because yeah, by nature of what I do. Right. But there are some really good commentaries. Like you just want to get a good commentary. So the Warren Wearsby B series, mm-hmm. he like every book is a from a book of the Bible, and it's like be this or be that or whatever. Yeah. Uh, those are really good. John Corson is another guy who's got a three set commentary that covers the whole Bible. So there's two for the Old Testament, one for the New Testament. He, those are really good. Um, t- I'm trying to think of some really good basic levels. I, I know his name's going to trigger some people, but John MacArthur's commentaries <laughs> mm-hmm. are really good. I mean, whatever you think about him as a, a person, doesn't matter. His he, he He's a good biblical scholar. And, so and, his, and you shouldn't just read commentaries from people you, ahead of time, know you agree with. Right, right. Yeah. You, yeah. Should, you should really read different opinions and you know compare what you believe against that right. and be challenged by it. 
I'll trigger Steve. I, I like some of Wesley's stuff. Well, it's older, right? I, I don't have a problem with his theology, more of his character yeah. in in some sense. Steve does not like John Wesley. I, I don't. I, I, he made a great system. If he was, if he, people if he followed us Wesley the, system. If he like walked through the doors it. of the gathering as a first time guest, would you tell him to leave? No. Absolutely not. You'd be I like, think you, John, you go home and be nice to your here. wife, <laughs> and then you come back. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that a lot of, a lot, like, the people who were probably some of, like, the best, you know, pastors were not good husbands or fathers or, you know, like that. I, because, I, I agree with what you're saying. Can I tweak it a little cause bit? Because there's a bunch of pastors well, sitting I don't in the think, room. I don't, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think you mean pastors in the traditional sense. You're thinking of the ones who like led massive yes, movements. Yes, I mean like... And I agree with you. Like, yeah. Like, like Martin Luther's one. Like Martin Luther, like even Billy Graham to some extent. Mark Driscoll. Uh, those guys were like... <laughs> Put that in the show notes like, too so I'm people sure, find it when they search I, and for I'm Mark sure that, Driscoll. That, you know, I'm sure that like a Billy Graham was a, a great father. Right. But he, he even said at the end of his life, he wished he would have spent more time with his family. And that's right. just the way those people are built. Is it, mm-hmm. they can just work and work and work and work yeah. and they get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And that's not conducive to being a good, um, quality time person with your kids, yep. with your wife and all mm-hmm. of that. And I would put Wesley in that, like he went to the U S he moved his family. Well, it wouldn't have been the U S back then. It's just, you know, been the colonies. Well, yeah. Whatever was it, or it might've been the, uh, it's close. It's close. It was right around that time, yeah. but I know he came to one of the colonies. Essentially. He went to a town and, and basically epically failed <laughs> and then went back right. and started was, preaching. I, I in, think it was in Georgia. I yeah, something was, like that. That he, sounds right. It's somewhere further south. I, I want to say like he was a kind of a contemporary of David Brainerd, who who did not fail as a missionary. Uh-huh. Um, but, but then he went back and just started preaching on the street corner. Well, some, that some would argue that he wasn't saved yet when he came to America, uh, right? Like that his actually conversion experience happened after that. It's interesting that you wouldn't be saved, but you would travel across the different, ocean different to time. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> All right. Okay. But we just well, this, we lost everybody no, with that no, well, little Yeah, we went off on yeah. the, the nerd, pastor tangent. Nerded, out, nerded out. Okay. Well, this actually it does lead into our next question because right. I think resources is part of this. Is what advice would you give to someone who wants to study the Bible but doesn't know how? We talked about a few things. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we already threw out a bunch of resources. Yeah. Let me give a method here that's easy to remember. We'll call it the the launch method. So it goes three, two, one. Go. Launch. Blast off. Blast off. <laughs> Blast Blast off. off. <laughs> All right. So three, two, one, right? So three questions to ask. So when you when you read a passage, ask three questions. Uh, those questions are, what is this teaching me about God? Mm-hmm. What is this teaching me about people? And what is this teaching me about life? Okay. Those, those three questions. Should we? Can we do an example? Do we have time to do that? Let's do it. Yes. All right, we're going to do it. So so this week we were um, preaching from Zechariah, right? And so that's kind of a, 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 a an obscure book, but let's let's look at what we preached from there, all right? So Zechariah 14, uh, 20 and 21. Your, your notes are not legible either. I don't think I could read those things. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny because sometimes I just don't even put notes in here anymore because I just, I can't, it's too small for me to read. Yeah. But like there are, there are some of the books like where you, you like I, I went kind of crazy. Let's see if I can find the one. There's like, they're very colorful, but you can see as I go on, I get less and less notes just because I, I can't hardly read them anymore. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so. So it says, right, on that day there shall be inscribed in the bells of the horses, holy to the Lord, and the pots in the house of the Lord shall be as the bulls before the altar, and every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holy to the Lord of hosts, that all his sacrifice may come in and take them and boil the meat of the sacrifice in them. And there shall no longer be a traitor in the house of the Lord of hosts on that day. That was fast. That was like right. two times speed. So, well, I'm, I'm assuming people, you know, can read it for themselves. Yeah. So you read something like that, and you're like, how can I ever, like, what what's in there for me? The horses and the bells. Right, and horses the, and bells. And, you know, I, I, had a, I had a fun little thing in in my notes, that was it was about uh, people, pots, and ponies. Yeah, is this but, ESV? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so anyway, so the three questions, right? What does this teach me about God? Well, if I just chew on this for a second, you know, the word holy comes up a couple of times, right? And, and so that kind of seems to be really integral. So, yeah. yeah, at the very, I can just leave it at that. I don't have to go deep in that. This, this, this is teaching me that God is holy. Yeah. And what is it teaching me about people? Well, it's actually teaching me about that that people are not holy but need to be cleansed, right? Because it actually says, it says that, that, you know, all will be able to. So it's this, this future oriented thing. So it's teaching me that God is holy and people are not, but people need to be made holy. What is this teaching me about life? 
well, I, I don't know that it says a lot about life. It talks about a lot of mundane things like mm-hmm. horses on bells and pots and bowls um, and meat and boiling it. And so maybe there's just this thing of, you know, that even the mundane stuff of life matters, mm-hmm. right? That, that you know, and, and so when I think about God as being holy and I need to be holy and the mundane stuff of life, that's an opportunity for me to be holy. So yeah. I just asked three questions and just kind of ran them through my head a little bit. And, and that gets me going. So that, that's three, three questions. Yeah. What does it teach me about God? What does it teach me about people? Yeah. What does it teach me about life? I, I think that Proverbs is a great chat or book to start that it process really with is. yeah proverbs but it's easy because the, more, I, the yeah. more the more you meditate on it the more you're like oh my gosh i didn't think of it that way right. or i could apply it to my life this way yeah. like like that would be a lot more difficult because if you're really new to studying the bible even getting to where you got to might be difficult it might be it might be but that, that gets us to two right yeah. so two is is two things to look for and, and so what we're looking for is keywords uh-huh. and action words Okay, so keywords can be any words that seem to be important. Yeah. So they might be repeated words or emphasized words. So as we read this, holy, I mentioned that holy is repeated several times. So that seems to be an, uh, an important keyword. So I, I, as I answer mm. my three questions, I'm thinking about why is holy important? Action words also matters. And so I might look through this and say, what are the action words? And what's interesting is there's a lot of future oriented, like there shall be, right? And then later on, there shall be. Um, and then late, later on, there shall no longer be. So the, those are action words that are, that are, you know, shall be, shall be, shall be, shall no longer be. So there's a future orientation here. One of the things to look for when you're looking at, at, at uh, action words is to ask yourself, is this a God action or a person action? Because that, that, that always matters in the Bible. And again, do this in Proverbs mm-hmm. and you learn a lot. Is this a God action or a person action? But also ask yourself with the action words, um, like when you're thinking about me personally, right? Is this happening for me, to me, or by me? That, that, that's a great way to think about the action words. So let, let's just pick a random proverb and do that, okay? Okay, so that's a good idea. I'm just going to, I think, okay, I'm in You're in Psalm. Prov- you're in Psalm. there? You're in Proverbs. That one. Okay. Okay, so... <laughs> is it going to be a good oh, this one? This is awesome. Okay, good. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club or a sword or a sharp Oof, arrow. That's really good. That, that is, is a so really good fi- one. That's a good proverb. It is a good proverb. Itself, right? Yeah, so like it's not, the, well, nicely written too. Right. So, you know, we, we're asking the questions, what does it teach about God? I'm not sure it teaches a lot about God, but you're going to come to that conclusion in a lot well, of what the God proverbs. Wants us to, how God wants us nice, to live. Nice. You know? What does it teach us about the nature of God? Like, what's the value of this verse? That he we wants us to line. live in peace and community, you know? Peace and community. All right, what, what's that, John? Uh, what was the first part of it? Who, a man who bears false witness. He hates lying. Yeah, so God mm-hmm. is true. All right, yeah, so I feel like I'm leading a Bible study. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, so so yeah, so it, what does it teach about us is that we ought to be truthful, right? Yeah. And that we, you know, when we're not, there, it leads to harm. It, it's crazy how Proverbs, though, like changes your mind. It like it like helps mm-hmm. focus your mind on w- how God wants you to live and and you can reap the benefits of it. It is a better way to live, period. Yeah, right. I don't care if it's linked to God or not. If you follow these teachings inside of Proverbs, your life will be better. Yep. I believe, yep. period. I don't believe I need to go any further than that. I don't think so. Yeah, but let's, let's, let's look at the action word real quick. Mm-hmm. So there's only one action word in here, and it's bears false witness, right? So a man who bears, that's, that's the action. So my question was, when you think about the action words, is it a God action or a person? It's a person action. Yeah. And then is it is it for me, to me, or by me? It's by me. And so obviously the action in this is something that I need to either do or not do. Yeah. And that brings us to our one, right? Yeah. So three questions, two things to think about. One action, mm-hmm. right? So we should always walk away from the Bible with at least one yeah. next step. And so I like on this one, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Like the one action is, you know, I shouldn't bear false witness, mm-hmm. but how do I, how do I really implement that today? I think maybe it's this thing where I do like some inner searching of myself and say, are there places in my life where maybe I'm not lying outright or bearing false witness, but are, are there places where I'm not being honest and maybe not even being honest with myself about something? Something. Yeah, and maybe I need to just raise my honesty level. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe it is. Hey, I'm bearing 
bearing false witness against my neighbor. You know, I, I went to the HOA, HOA and ratted on them, and I shouldn't have. <laughs> so, well, and, and there's even something past that where a lot of us we uh, bear fault, false witness against other people, but to ourselves, right? So we can oh, correct. Oh, this, this, this whole, is good. Yeah, whole lies about people, so we can, you know, I can be mad at them, and I don't have to feel any of the blame. I can just put everything on them, and that's not necessarily fair. It's probably not even true, but eventually we start to believe the lives that we we tell right. ourselves. Like, and, and actually, we may believe it from the get go. Yeah. And, and maybe the, maybe the, this, that's, that's such a good application is to, I need to re-examine the narratives in Facebook my mind. short here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. I, and I was I thinking on another plane there, but for someone who you guys know me, like sometimes I stress about things that I shouldn't stress about or I don't, I don't see that or, or <laughs> I don't really like conflict in life either, but when I can read Proverbs and I can understand it, it like takes pressure off of like, well, this is obviously what I need to do. This is the right path. So I don't have to second guess myself. If I do this, then life is going to be pointing me in the right direction. So it helps me with knowing these are the right ways to live life. God is telling me to do this. I should do it. So I'm not thinking about, should I confront this person? Should I not confront them? Like, am I going to make them unhappy? No, this is the right thing to do. This is the right path for me. So it's clear for me to see I need to do this whether I want to or not. That's the best thing about Proverbs. It is a very, I mean, it's probably the easiest book. I think one of the easiest books Mm -hmm. to study and understand because it's like, well, what did God say? Do it there. Just do it. You know, do what it it says. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like that verse right there is a great example because on the surface level, it's just really obvious. Don't tell lies. Yeah. Right. Don't lie about your neighbor. But then you took it a little bit deeper. Like don't, don't replay this narrative about your neighbor that may be false. And and if you want to, you can even go further because we didn't even touch on the second line, Mm -hmm. which is about the damage it does. And I mean, those are really powerful words, like a war club, like a sharp piercing arrow. And you know, it just starts to think through how much it can, how much damage a false narrative can mm-hmm. do um, to your neighbor and to yourself. And, and sometimes we think, well, it's not that big a deal, right? Mm-hmm. It's not that big a deal for me to hold on to this. But it, you know, I'm I'm being destructive by doing that. Yeah. And the narrative of war, like it affects more than just the person who you're fighting with. It, it doesn't say, people oh, you might involved. hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. It's, it's using violence. You'll yeah. destroy them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, all of us would say, oh, I don't, I mean, I may not like this person, but I don't, I don't want to kill, kill them. Right. But this is yeah. saying, hey, this is pretty, pretty on par with that. And, 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 and the weapons described here, they, they create wounds that are unrecoverable. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's really powerful. Like the damage you do, you can, you can never clean it all up. Mm-hmm. There will be scars forever. And, and the best part about verses like this and, and, and pieces of wisdom that come from scripture like this is all of us have been on the other side of that, right? Right. We've all experienced mm-hmm. when someone has lied about us or said something that was untrue and unkind or, or gossiped and it, and it cuts so deep and you feel it. And so it's one of those things that this still comes out of the love your neighbor as yourself, right? Um, I need to now know that since I've experienced this, I don't want other people to experience right. this. So I need, I need yep. to speak truth. Yeah. And, which, and, which, you know, is why Jesus said this sums up all the law and all the prophets, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, great discussion here. I got one last question. All right. And let's try and make it short if possible. I don't know if you can or not, but um, what is the next? Because I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if you will. I don't know the answer to this question here. Okay. All right. I, I may know the answer to it, but there's a lot of things that could be. What's the next big thing that's going to happen at the gathering? Yay. Hey. All right. The next big thing. Next big thing. Big. We've got a big surprise for Steve planned. Christmas Eve. Yeah, let's go with Christmas Eve. Okay. We'll go Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve is going to happen this year. It's going to be on December 24th. Yes. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Yes. I know. I oh, know. Hold on. Shocking. I need to put this in my calendar. December 24th. Uh, Matt, you, can you Google that? Make sure that's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a Sunday. You, you said to keep this short. Okay, All right. my bad. Which is December Touché. 20, Touché. Touché. December twenty fourth is a Sunday, and so on that day there will be no morning services because we'll be having our services that evening, mm-hmm. and there will be two services, one at four and one at five thirty. Yep. Um, I, I don't know which will be more full. I anticipate they'll both be pretty full. So you're going to want to come early. You're going to want to sit down near the front, move towards the center to leave room All for, of those things for everybody are else. Right. But uh, pick which one works for you, four or five thirty, And uh, it's going to be an awesome night. You know, Christmas songs, candles, stuff for kids, yep. an awesome, awesome message. Yes. And if you like candles and lighting things on fire, there will be something for you. 
Yep. It's one of my favorite services we yeah. do here. Yep. Yep. Gonna and be traditions. It. We haven't really, we, I, we haven't changed. I don't know what it was like before you got here, but. I don't either. I wasn't here. You were, <laughs> what, was that the first I don't think it's light candle lighting? I don't, I don't think they've it's changed. They've always done no, that. No, I think they've always done it. I don't think it's changed much over the years. Okay. Great. Yep. Well, that is the next big thing. And there are many other big things coming up in the new year. Um, yes. There's going to be top secret though. Tops, well, not all of them are top secret. Super top. We're going to do this. Yeah. We've got a huge event planned for end of January, early February. You're not going to believe it. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah. You're going to want to come hungry. Unlike anything you've ever experienced. <laughs> yes. I'm, uh, I'm so intrigued. What is it? <laughs> okay. It's, it's the chili bowl, John. <laughs> oh, <whoa>. oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, this this is going to be a lot of unhappy people at Chili Bowl. Not me, <laughs> not me Can either. You, no, no, no. But the good news is they're they're like they're going to know now. There's plenty now. plenty of time to. So can you a, imagine to sit in if the Lions in. and the Browns are still alive when we get to the Chili Bowl? I don't think the Browns have any shot of it after. Well, I don't think the Lions do either. But you can don't you think imagine? so? I think no. the Lions have a, they're have a shot. They're pretenders. Really? You heard it here first. They're pretenders. Man, when they look good, they look so good. But it's against bad teams. Teams. Uh, I mean, Don't not all they, of them, though. Yes, yes. Every <laughs> team they've beaten this year has a losing record. Really? Yeah. Confirmed. They didn't <laughs> can confirm. I haven't watched them much, but the games that I've watched them in. They're like the cream yeah. in your pumpkin spice <clears throat> thing. Well, the Browns have beat good teams. Yeah. Um, but... They so the just Browns have lost the Ravens, all their good right? players. The Browns beat the Ravens the and Raven, the 49ers. The Ravens beat the Lions 38 to 7. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. Yep. All right. Okay. We stop good show. lamenting. Good show. Okay. Good show. Well, thanks for joining us and we will be back here next week. Bye.